Hi there, my name is Stephen O'Hara and today I'm going to be telling you the story of the Full Jew Stone. Now, in 1803 there was a headstone in the cemetery here in Cushendon up at St. Patrick's Church in Craiga and the headstone is lying flat on the ground and it's been like that we know since 1803 for reasons that will become clear as the story goes on. And originally what it said on that headstone was the burying place of Charles McAllister. And that's the way it was in 1803. Now Charles McAllister had a son called John. And John was 18 years old and he was a sailor. And he was engaged to be married. And his fiancée and he agreed that he would take one more voyage and that on his return that they would marry and when he went to sea she was to make the preparations for the wedding. So he sailed from Cushendon Bay and his schooner left to go on its voyage. Now his fiance she had a sister living in Glenravel and her sister was a seamstress and she decided she would visit her sister and get her to make her wedding gown and she set off from Cushendon. Now in 1803 uh, there was not great infrastructure, the roads were very poor, the country was very heavily wooded and a journey from Cushendon to Glenravel was a serious undertaking. So she set off on a donkey with her bag of material and tools and whatever else she needed for her sister and her to make the preparations. And she, she, she went from home. It would have taken the best part of a day or perhaps a day and part of a night to get there. And while she was gone, maybe on the first day or the second day, the people of the village noticed a schooner pulling back in towards Cushendon Bay. And they knew that something wasn't right because they knew that it should be gone for many weeks. And in fact, it had come back only after a few days. And as it approached the bay, people started to line the harbour and they were looking out to see what the problem was. And as the, the boat dropped anchor, they noticed that they lowered down a rowing boat into the water and then they saw and their hearts sank as a body was lowered down wrapped in a sheet into the rowing boat and two men rowed the boat to shore and by the time the boat reached shore more people had gathered because word spreads quickly in a small community of a tragedy and when the boat docked in the harbour they were told that it was the remains of young John McAllister and that during the voyage, on the first or second day out, he had been up at the tallest mast of the ship and he had fallen and he fell to the deck and he died. And they ended the voyage there and then and they sailed for home. Now, his fiancée was too far away to contact. There was no radio, there was no telegram, there was no means of contacting her. Now, they could have set out and travelled to Glenravel and told her and brought her home but two to three days might have passed and in those times it was considered more important to get the young fella buried. So they did, they buried him and on the headstone beneath his father's inscription it said the burying place of Charles McAllister and then underneath and his son John aged 18 died 1803 and they just had to wait for the fiancé to return home. And after several days, she did indeed arrive home on the donkey, carrying a satchel with her wedding gown made inside and various other bits and pieces for the wedding. And as she arrived in Cushendon, they broke the news to her that John had passed away. Well, she just went into a terrible depression. She was broken-hearted, and that evening... She wandered from the house and the family thought, well, we'll give her her space, she's grieving, we'll let her go. And they didn't hassle her. And the way she went, and as evening wore on, they didn't fret too much, but then darkness fell and they started to become worried because she hadn't returned. So a search party was mounted and out they went and they searched the village and they walked the back roads and they looked everywhere that they could think of, but they couldn't find her and more people were brought out for the search and the search continued through the night and at dawn's light they arrived at St Patrick's Cemetery and in they went and sure enough on top of the 
the headstone that was lying flat was the body of John McAllister's fiancée. And when they rolled her away from the headstone, she and the knight had carved some words into the headstone, which are there today, and you can go to the church and you can see these. And what she wrote was this. Your ship, love, is moored head and stern for a full Jew. And, of course, a full Jew to a sailor had a lot of meaning because if you went on a voyage, you didn't get paid at each harbour that you stopped at. You, you waited and did the entire voyage. And when the ship returned to its home port, the captain would settle the accounts and pay the sailors uh, according to their rank and their service. And that was known as getting your full due, which was two words. But, of course, to John McAllister's fiance, it was one word, full due. And that's what she carved on the headstone. What a beautiful piece of poetry and an example of love in times of tragedy. And I'll tell you it again. She said, Your ship, love, is moored head and stern for a full due. And beneath that she had carved two little images which are still there and still visible. And one was a ship. And people think that perhaps this is the ship that John McAllister sailed in. And... Also, there's an animal carved there, and of course over time, uh, wind and rain and the elements have worn the images away somewhat. We can see that it's an animal, but we don't know if it's a horse or a goat or a donkey or what it is. But anyhow, it was carved there by the hand of the fiancé of John McAllister. Now, we don't know the girl's name, and we don't know whose family she belonged to, and we don't know where she's buried. But in recent years, the local heritage groups have... Uh, have erected a, a sculpted stone seat in Cushendon Harbour and there's a very beautiful carving on the front of it of a young girl and that is to represent that young girl who was so sadly bereaved at that time. So you can go and see this in Cushendon any time you're there, the full Jew stone and it's a very interesting thing and a great love story and something that has been there for, for 217 years. So that's the story of the Full Jew Stone.